On this episode of Micromatic, we're going to talk about the three elements of manual exposure. We're going to talk about aperture, we're going to talk about ISO, and we're going to talk about shutter speed. So now if you're shooting a camera that offers manual control, and most Micro Four Thirds cameras do, uh, you're going to be looking at three main settings. You're going to be looking at aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. And if you're like me, you might not naturally know what those mean. Uh, I had a DSLR for a long time, and it took me a while to learn exactly what those meant. And even then, once I learned what they meant, I was still kind of afraid of shooting a manual until I really got a grasp of it. And so that's my goal for this video, as well as what I'm going to follow up with, is to really give you a solid grasp of what those three controls do and how they'll work for your photography. Now, another term I'm going to be using uh, in this conversation is exposure. Uh, and just to show you what exposure means, I'm actually going to illustrate it here with the photograph. Now you can see in this photograph of the pier, this photo I would say is underexposed, where it's too dark. We didn't capture quite enough light to make the photograph that I was looking for. You know, you can tell that it's underexposed because if you look at the pier and you look at the sand and the beach, there's not a lot of detail there. In this image I would say is overexposed. There's some detail in the pier and in the sand that we were missing in the other shot, but the sky is completely washed out. Finally, here's the third exposure. This is what I would identify as a correct exposure. And so when we're talking about using these three settings to control your exposure, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about taking a photograph and capturing the correct amount of light. And because the amount of available light varies by setting, that's why you need to change these three settings in order to get the exposure you're looking for. And the first thing I want to talk about is aperture. Now aperture is just how wide open your lens is, okay? Uh, inside of your lens, there is a mechanism that control, that contracts and expands to allow for more or less light to come through the lens, okay? If you're in a situation where you're outside and it's super bright, you might get too much lens or too much light come through that lens. And so what you need to do is you need to close up the aperture to reduce the amount of light that comes through it. One quick gotcha with aperture, uh, interesting thing, the smaller the number is actually the more light that's coming through the lens. I know it's a little counterintuitive, but if you have a lens that's a 1.8 aperture, that means you're letting in quite a bit of light versus if you were to bump the aperture up to 8.0, actually means a smaller opening and less light coming through. Now once that light comes through the lens, it's going to hit the camera sensor, and this is where ISO comes into play. ISO, or ISO, determines how sensitive the camera sensor is to the light that's coming through. If you have a lower number, that means the, the sensor is less sensitive, whereas if you increase the, your ISO, you're increasing the sensitivity of the sensor. Now, as you can imagine, uh, increasing the sensitivity of the sensor will help you make the most of available light when you're in situations where there's not a lot of light available. The last thing I wanted to talk about is shutter speed. And now shutter speed determines how long the camera sensor is exposed to the light that's coming through the lens. Now shutter speeds are usually measured in fractions of a second. For example, a shutter speed of 100 on your camera is actually reading 1 100th of a second. Uh, you might also bump it up to 8,000, in which case you're talking about a shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second. Now, if you're good at math, you know that 1 8,000th of a second is a shorter amount of time versus 1 100th of a second, which means you're getting a shorter exposure. The light that's coming through that aperture is hitting the sensor for a shorter amount of time. Think of it for a second in terms of getting a suntan. Let's say you're vacationing somewhere that's super sunny. The sky's aperture is wide open. Now you might step outside and apply some sunscreen to lower the sensitivity of your skin and depending on how long you spend in the sun will determine how much exposure your skin gets to that sun. You might end up with the perfect tan or you might end up with no tan at all or you could overexpose and actually get sunburned. That's kind of what it's like when you take a photograph. The aperture of your lens determines how much light is coming through. The ISO is determining how sensitive your sensor is. And the shutter speed is determining how long that sensor is going to be exposed to the light coming through the lens. Now these three controls, aperture, ISO, and shutter speed, have other effects on the quality of your photo. Uh, and they're things that I'll get into in a future episode here on Micromatic. But 
with these basics covered, you should have a better idea uh, next time you go out and try and shoot manual. If that was helpful, consider hitting the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm going to keep updating Micromatic with new videos talking about subjects relevant to Micro Four Thirds shooters, but really, they're topics that are going to be relevant to anybody that's getting into photography. And with that said, I'm out. I'll see you next time.